In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own Likert scale question in the all-new Adobe Captivate. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make uh, videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here today, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and by all means, share this video with your e-learning buddies. I was visiting the Adobe e-learning community website, and I saw a very simple question that unfortunately doesn't really have a simple answer. The question was, is there a way to create a Likert scale slide in Captivate version 12? Unfortunately, Adobe has not included a Likert scale or rating scale question in the all new Adobe Captivate. However, I think they've given us the building blocks that we can create our own custom Likert scale or rating scale, if you will. Let me show you. Okay, so before we begin to build our custom Likert scale slide, we need to make sure our Adobe Captivate project is set up to upload the data from this interaction to our learning management system. On a Mac, you would click on the Adobe Captivate drop-down menu and select Preferences. I'm using Windows, so in this case, I'm going to click on the Edit drop-down menu and select Preferences. So within the quizzing category, I need to click on the reporting subcategory, and then I'm going to enable reporting for this project. Then you would choose whichever reporting standard your LMS uses. I'm just going to use SCORM 1.2 for now, and I'm going to click on configure and make sure that the course title is accurately represented here. So I'm just going to type in survey questions. We'll go back to the reporting section here. Now, I'm not going to have a quiz in this particular e-learning course, so I'm simply going to set success completion criteria for slide views, and I'm going to unselect quiz. Before we navigate away from here, I do want to point out the data to report section. Uh, currently, it's set up to report a quiz at a certain percentage, but here's the important bit that I want to draw your attention to. It's important that interaction data is selected. Otherwise, this information won't get uploaded to the LMS. So you're going to want to make sure that that is selected. It is a default, but make sure you don't unselect it before you click OK. OK, so we don't want to just have the interaction on the slide. We want to introduce it a little bit here. So I'm going to click on the text icon in the left-hand toolbar and select Paragraph. I'm going to replace the title with Rating Scale, since most of our students probably don't know what a Likert scale is. And then I'm going to update the body to read, please rate this course on the following items. You can resize this block if you wish, give you more room for other items below it. I'm going to click on the Interactions icon in the left-hand toolbar. Now, I could select Radio Group. That certainly would work for a Likert scale. But I kind of like the idea of a drop-down, since when it's collapsed, it won't take up very much room on the slide. So I'm going to edit the label to read, there was sufficient activities to perform the skills in this course. Now I'm going to click on the actual drop-down component for this block, and in our Visual Properties Inspector, under Options, you'll see a button for Edit Content. I'm going to go ahead and press that. Now because the drop-down component is a multi-state object, the States panel will appear, and you're certainly free to adjust the appearance. I'm going to go with the defaults here, and just for convenience, I'm just going to move the States panel uh, to the left here so it's out of the way here. The first thing I need to do is increase the number of options in this drop-down from 3 to 5. And now I'm going to replace these answers with answers of my own. So I'm going to double-click here and put in strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, and strongly disagree. Now, to ensure that this component reports to the LMS, we need to scroll down in our Visual Properties Inspector until we get to the Reporting section. Expand the Reporting section, and you may need to scroll it down a little bit more, and make sure to include this in the quiz. 
Now we're not including a score in the quiz, so we need to unselect Add to Total and select Report to LMS. Now when you choose Report to LMS, this generates an interaction ID that will be used to identify this particular interaction in your LMS. Interaction ID 548 doesn't mean very much, so I'm going to replace this with survey question 01. Just press enter to make sure it takes that there. Now you're free, of course, to just go with the one drop down selection, but most uh, surveys that you're going to give your students, there's probably going to be more than one data point that you wish to capture. So I'm going to press Control D on my keyboard. If I was using a Mac, I think it would be Command D, and that will duplicate this exact block, including the drop down selector. The nice thing about duplicating it is, of course, everything is identical. I just need to make a couple of small changes. So for example, if I click on the drop down, we'll see the same answers that I put in before. I'm going to update the label on this to say, you know, this online course will help me perform my duties back on the job. Now I'm going to select the drop down selector because, of course, when you duplicate an item like this in Adobe Captivate, it still will maintain all the settings that you've selected before for reporting, but the interaction ID will be reset to another arbitrarily assigned number here. So we're going to want to update that to be survey question 02. And again, just press number 2 there, press enter. I need something to navigate away from this slide, so I'm going to click on the add interactive icon and select buttons. And we'll change that to submit, even though there's nothing being submitted. The action for this will just simply take them to the next slide and press done. Let's go ahead and add another slide that they can navigate to. I'll just make a blank slide here. And we'll add another button block. And I will return to my Visual Properties Inspector. We'll center that. I'll relabel it to be Exit Course. And the action for that is the same, exit course. So we'll find that in the more section of our actions, select exit course, and then press done. Let's return to slide number one and preview this and make sure it works. Okay, looks good here. So there was sufficient activities to practice the skills in this course. And I can say agree. This online course will help me perform my duties back on the job. And I can say strongly agree. And then I can go ahead and press submit. Takes me to the next slide. And then I can exit the course. So now you're ready to publish this course. We're going to click on the ellipses icon next to the preview button and select publish to computer. Give your project a title and select a location where you're going to publish to. In my case, I'm using the desktop, and all I need to do is press Publish. This will produce a folder and a zipped version of that folder in the destination you use to publish your project. Work with your LMS administrator to upload this sample project to your LMS. Make sure that they can report on the data that this interaction is capturing. Once you are satisfied that the data is captured and you can report on it, incorporate this type of interaction toward the end of all your e-learning courses. The feedback from students is invaluable when it comes to continuous improvement of your e-learning projects. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.